we got to be visible if they can't find us. Like we're the best uh, doctor, for the best uh, chiropractor in the city. Like how, and, and we help people. Like how are they gonna know unless we put ourselves out there and be visible? So I think these tools, these apps, they only just enhance our ability to connect with people. Video is everywhere. You're watching one right now. Heck. You're probably watching two right now. You're probably like scrolling through TikTok on another device where you have this pulled up. Video is so incredibly accessible today, not just to consume, but also to create. But despite it being easier than ever before to produce high quality video, lots of businesses still struggle with producing effective video marketing strategies that actually return on their investment. So I thought I would invite a special guest to the show today, Marvin Flavian, owner of MK Flav Video. It's a full service video production company based out of New Jersey, right across the river, but he serves clients all over the world. But he doesn't just make videos for people. He teaches people how to use video the most effective way to engage new customers, get in front of a bigger audience. So I'm really excited to pick his brain. Marv, thanks so much for joining us today and being willing to share some of your expertise. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's a great intro. Thank you. So I don't think anybody doubts that video is one of the most engaging marketing assets you can use as a business, but you've worked with a lot of clients. What are some of the biggest hurdles you've seen businesses getting hung up on, keeping them from either getting started in the first place with video or keeping them from using video as well as they could? Yeah, I think the biggest thing is they don't know what to do. They don't know what to say. Um, I feel like they might even feel pressure because there's everyone's not everyone, but like there's so much out there. Like what, what, what can they contribute to the conversation? You know, so I feel like a lot of them don't really know exactly what to put out, what to say and how to go about it. And I think that in itself, like they get stuck in that no man's land, like don't know what to do. So I'm not gonna do anything. So being able to come in and like give them a clear guidance and direction, like how to approach it. I think that's probably like the coolest thing about that. It's not just the, the technical piece, like actually making a video you really help people and what you're seeing people get stuck on is just knowing what to do with video in the first place is that what i'm hearing i feel like if you don't have that like i don't know you can't really just press record or like i feel like that's the biggest thing holding you back so that's kind of the things that um like with, with my content we produce we try to give them strategies of how to like what to do how to do it how to get started that's the first conversation we have with our clients too it's like what is it we're going to talk about like who are you what do you do who are your clients and really just build that foundation to actually start putting stuff out into the world. Once you help identify what you're talking about, what your goals for video are in the first place, how easy or hard is it to get started after that? Like if they're starting completely from scratch, um, you know, what other things should they have um, kind of like planned out and ready? To, to get cracking and moving in the right direction. I think the, the thing you should be looking for is someone who can actually guide you. If you don't have the marketing like background, if you don't know what to do, what to post, if you don't understand any of these platforms, make sure the person you hire does, you know what I'm saying? Because a lot of times it's just here's a video and they leave and like, what good is a video if you make one and, and you can't put it out there and no one sees it, you know? So my thing is really just understand like who your target is. I think that's like one of the biggest questions need to be asked before you even like invest in something like what what are those two what are those two things i used to be in video production like earlier on in my career i actually was a freelance video producer maybe if like i took a couple turns differently further upstream i would have been a competitor to yours or uh, or maybe a business <laughs> partner like but i was i was in that world and it's it's crazy to see how the whole space has evolved like to shoot high def video like you had to have really expensive equipment. It would take hours to edit and render it all out. But now you can shoot 4K video with your phone and edit it, you know, just as fast and then have it up somewhere immediately. The technology is super accessible and really easy to use now. But now it sounds like a huge piece of video production 
isn't just the technical know-how, but the strategy and just really coaching people through through how to use how to use their video effectively. That sounds like that's that's really the core of of what you do and what a lot of uh, where a lot of the video production industry has gone nowadays. Yeah, I mean, I would agree. I think I think before it was more like people didn't have access to the big cameras or high quality, high definition. Now, like you said, it's all on cell phones. I think, and I think, and for like people like me, and I feel like it's like, what problem are you gonna are you solving now? Because if it's just, hey, we can make these really nice looking videos for you. It's like, um, but I kind of need clients, I need leads, I need to get my message out. So it's like, you got to really understand like what problem that you're actually solving, you know, for mm -hmm. uh, these clients and businesses too as well. So I think that's, that's like you said, that's a big piece. What can you do? Like, how can you um, get yourself visible? Especially if you want to reach people, if you want to help people, it's like, we got to, we got to be visible. If they can't find us, like how are they going to, you know, if we're the best uh, doctor, if we're the best uh, chiropractor in, 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 the, in the city, like how, and, and we help people, like how are they going to know unless we put ourselves out there and be visible? So I think these tools, these apps, they only just, enhance our ability to connect with people i'm totally dating myself but like <laughs> earlier on some of the videos that i would make for clients they would get sent in the mail to people like on a dvd or even a vhs cassette like <laughs> like i need to stop for a moment and think about how old i am um <laughs> but uh, then you also had tv commercials um yeah. was another way that you could get in front of people but now there are millions I don't think I'm overestimating. Like, there's so many ways you can get in front of people. But that, in its own right, is a little intimidating, a little confusing. How would you coach a client to find the best channel for them to put their video out and, and try to find the right audience? Yeah. Well, here's the thing. I think the best thing to understand is, like, what platform has the best organic reach? Um, meaning like people can know about you, see your stuff and not essentially be following you. I think TikTok has that right now. It's, it's, it's really good. Like, um, as far as like no one knows, like no one's following you, but they could come across your content if you post on this platform. Um, especially with, with geo tags, location tags. I don't know if you've ever been traveling and you start scrolling through like TikTok, they will start actually showing you stuff that's in that city because they know your location. So I think like as businesses, like understand like which platform has the best organic reach and go start from there. And then who, who is your ideal people? Are you more younger generation? Is it more older older people? Or is it more like, you know, where, where, where do they hang out at, you know? Uh, Facebook for me is still big because a lot of my people hang out on Facebook, they hang out in Facebook groups, but I'm also visible on TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube and things like that. So it's just understanding like where your people hang out at and also to which platform is going to give me the best return on my time and my energy, you know? I'm also thinking... LinkedIn too. LinkedIn, really? LinkedIn too. Don't don't sleep on LinkedIn. It's, it's, okay. it's pretty, yeah. So each of these platforms kind of have a different flavor though, right? So depending on the sort of content that you're putting out well, let me phrase it this way you're not gonna put TikTok memes on linkedin right you're, you're gonna kind of approach that with a, a different style or or not like is it all can you use the same voice and and tone and format across all these platforms or do you need to be really intentional to craft your marketing and your videos for each of these platforms? That's I, like one of the biggest questions. I think, um, personally, I, I do. I use content across the board. I would say create content in a whole, like what is this content that we're gonna be about? And how can we disperse this content into other platforms, you know? So I, I create like a long form video, then I create, take pieces from that and post it on other social media channels. I can take from it, I can add to it, I can, um, replicate it in different ways. Uh, but I think the cool the thing is that people get hung up on is what um, platform should they be on? I mean, if you can try to be on all of them, I know that's a lot to ask, um, but I feel if, but if, I, if you look at con creating content as a whole, like start from there and then break it down into push it out to other channels, then you might, might find it a little bit easier in that sense. So it, it just depends on like what your capacity you have. If you can only do one right now, just do one right now, focus on that. Um, eventually you down the line, get some help in other areas. That kind of raises another question. 
how much of this should you be trying to do yourself and what should you be leaving to the professionals? The best thing you can do is just understand what's happening on these platforms. You, you never want to be in a situation when, when you bring someone in and you don't know exactly what they're doing. You would hate for someone to come in and be posting all these videos for you and they're not even keywording like your content mm -hmm. and things like that. So, so I would say even if you're not like actively posting on all, all these platforms, at least go in to understand like, all right, this is what this means. This is how this works and things like that. So you're not in completely in the dark when you do come have someone come in. I always try to teach my clients like certain things. Obviously, sometimes it goes one in the air at the, at the other, but I always try to kind of show them, explain like, this is why we're doing this. And this is like kind of kind of teach them and show them the way kind of thing. So I, I really like that approach. I like that that's the way you do business empowering your clients mm -hmm. uh, to really understand and have as much ownership of their strategy as possible. I try to do the same thing. And I appreciate that that is value that you deliver for your clients. Video production quality. How have you seen short form videos, TikTok especially, um, kind of change the the way people approach creating videos and the need for high production, well lit, well like just super snappy editing. And now, you know, a lot of the videos and, and I've seen a lot of people coaching people are just kinda like, don't don't be too polished, be a little bit more real. What what are your thoughts on on where things are going with that? Yeah, I think I think what made TikTok so um, appealing was because you know on Instagram everyone wants to put out their best everyone wants to look perfect clean nice looking I think with TikTok it was more raw it was more unfiltered in that sense um, so so it, there's things you can do like like as you can see here like and it's not it's not super perfect but you see how there's light on my face you can kind of see me there's kind of a light back there so I'm trying to like make sure I stay right here mm -hmm. so it's not like kind of getting my thing but I'm trying to make it perfect but but make sure it's like good so make sure like you're properly lit make sure um, your sound like as you can see I have a mic close to my mouth it's not all the way back there so you can hear me clearly so you don't want to make stuff yeah. that people can't really hear you they can't really see you and things like that so there's elements of like quality production quality you can add it's just it's just where it depends on like where you're at in business mm -hmm. um what what you want to portray how visible you want to be but uh, honestly it's really just about like being true to who you are um, and speaking in your brand voice and, and to your people and things like that to make sure like you're not like putting up a facade. A lot of the videos are super flashy. People were like, like coaching entrepreneur, the bro, the bro life kind of thing. Like doing mm -hmm. flashy cars. Everybody knows getting just renting something yeah, on exactly, row. Exactly. Yeah. In front of an Airbnb. <laughs> Exactly. So people, people, people can kind of see through like the, the the stuff. So like, just be genuine to who you are, yeah. who you're trying to talk to in that sense. So, speaking of being genuine to who you are, um, what's your pro wrestler name? I, I saw you uh, took a class recently. Yeah, definitely. It was. Um, still thinking on it. Don't know yet. Um, All right. I, I yeah, enjoy definitely. seeing the stuff you're putting out on social media and you promote your business a lot, but you put a lot of yourself and your personal interests out there as well. Like I, we haven't hung out face to face for a while, but I, I still feel connected to you. I know what you like. I know what you don't like, and you just have a really good blend. Would you recommend business owners take a similar approach? Does that always work? I've also heard some people advise to kind of keep your your personal social media and your professional and brand footprint uh, a little bit separate. Do you have a take on that? For me, business is fun. Business is about relationships. So if I can't connect with you on on a personal level, like probably not going to be a good, good fit, you know? So uh, that's why in my Zoom backgrounds, I got like a little Power Ranger Zordon type of thing, you know what I'm saying? So one, it, it, it's, it's um, icebreaker, you know, um, mm -hmm. for, for conversation, stuff like that. But yeah, I think just being personable, showing people that you're human too, um, showing the things that you are interested in. Like you can literally like find out that you into the same thing and now you have a, that might be the reason why you guys work together, you know what I'm saying? So I think just um, don't be afraid to put yourself out there. I mean, you don't have to share every little detail about you but you know just share what you what kind of things you're into like we're all human we're all trying to 
take care of our family, our responsibilities, and you know, make the make the best of what we got. You know, so it's like at the end of the day, it's people working with people. So as much as you can show, like you know, you are a person. Like people can appreciate that. You know, it kind of goes back to what we were talking about earlier. It's all about what what are your goals? Like understanding what you want to do with this, what you want to say, mm -hmm. and how you want people to see you in your business. I guess if your business and your personal life don't necessarily have a lot in common, you know, that could kind of create some brand confusion if you're meshing those things together in what you're putting out there online. So there might be a case to keep those things separate, uh, you know, depending what your goals are. But you know, who knows? Like we see a big push for authenticity and you're just talking about the importance of that relational element in marketing. Mm -hmm. So I, I guess there really isn't a, a one size fits all. You just kind of have yeah. to feel it out and, and experiment and, and see what works. Yeah. And also it also depends on like like what industry you're in. Like I mm -hmm. work with a lot of coaches. So a lot of times it's just me working with, you know, the owner and things like that. So um, for them to be able to connect with me and me connect with them like it's 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 like it makes sense you know so i, I think to, depending on like where you're at and like who you're trying to you know reach i think it, like you said just comes back to the beginning like what the goals are too so i've been coaching several clients um trying to convince them to put more of themselves out there um step up and be the face of their business but a lot of people are really uncomfortable with the prospect of being on camera. I think they know that this is what they should do, but it's just re really hard for them to kind of get there and get comfortable. How would you coach somebody to feel a little bit more comfortable, a little bit more confident? Like I always say, like video is not about you. It's about the person on the other side of the camera. Hmm. So if we start looking at it through that lens, it's like, maybe I'm not too concerned about how I look and how I sound and really focus on like, is my message coming across well for them? Is this the kind of message they need to hear? Is this the help that they can be able to get from, from watching or seeing this video or, or content that we put out? So once we bring it back to that and then you know, usually it's it's like we're, we're good, we're able to do it. And then also too, just know like if maybe you need help in certain areas, maybe you do need a director to help you interview you through like your content or your videos and things like that. So uh, just, it just comes down to being self-aware, you know, and, and knowing like, you know, this is, this is where I can best be served. This is how I can best help and things like that. So just come down to, really just comes down to that in that sense, so. I love that. That's such a powerful concept, like just, what you're saying like we're talking about getting comfortable in front of camera but you could really apply that concept across your whole business like it's not what you're doing don't worry about just showing off and looking flashy it's about how well you can serve your customer and if that shows up in your messaging if that shows up in in the way that you do business in the the product and the service itself like just having that mentality it's not about me that is that's huge and seeing you apply that to to video and coaching your customers that's awesome if you think about it like if you were in front of you know your prospect or your client like you have no problem talking to them right you wouldn't need like to you wouldn't be doubting or second guessing yourself if they were right in front of you you know so i always kind of look at it as like that video is just talking to that person i i love that you're not just a video producer, you're not just setting up lights and press and record, you're coaching your clients through this. What's one of your favorite things about what you do? Just, just being able to see um, what being other clients, my clients' clients being able to see like the work that my clients do. Um, because I, especially like for coaches, it's kind of hard to like, like how good are we like we don't have like a, a certain product they can't like it's not like a food like you can't taste it to see oh this is good you know so it's like i feel like we're almost like creating something um that can be used to you know enhance or push push forward the mission that they're they're on like when when i'm talking with clients and i see and i hear and I understand and like i feel their passion and like it's, it's just crazy and they don't have a video so they can't like this is what it looks like you know so it's like being able to like just put it into like you know, and it's an action. The media is just, it's just really cool, man. It's just, it's just really, and I think for me, that's the best part, especially when they get the first video and they tell me like, can't believe what you did. Like, and then, yeah, just, I think that's the best part. It's like a time machine too. You take this conversation that happened between 
you and your client, and now you can share that with so many people, capture that same passion and replay that any number of times. Like you don't need to be in the room anymore to get that taste. Everybody can be there and enjoy that. That's the power of video. Like someone could be on your website right now just getting that message and you're just doing something else, you know? So exactly right. I, I think that's the power. That's really truly the power of video. Well, hey, this has been a delight. One of my favorite things about the job I'm doing right now is being able to have conversations like this. So I really appreciate you taking time out of your day to just share some of your expertise, share your passion. Where can people learn more about you and, and what you do? Yeah, um, I'm MK Play Video. I am super visible, so not hard to find. Um, but yeah, if you want to just see like what I'm all about, you can check us out at, at mkflayvideo.com and just kind of see, you know, what we're about, the mission that we're on, and just, you know, be a part of it, so. Thank you again for your time. This has been awesome. Uh, wish you luck in all you do, and uh, we'll keep in touch. Thanks, Marvin. Will do. Thank you. And thank you for watching. I hope this was helpful. I love having conversations and introducing you to other people who are self-employed, starting their own business, living the dream, sharing their knowledge, and hopefully encouraging you Self-employment is not by your self-employment. There are other people out there who are willing to help, who are willing to share their skills or expertise to help you get ahead, like Marvin and like myself. So if you have any questions, you can drop a comment below. You can reach out to me at Self Employment Sidekick. If you need help with video marketing, you can check out Marv at mkflayvideo.com. And be sure to follow along, subscribe, hit the like button, hit the notification bell, because I have a lot more friends. I'd like to introduce you to. I have a lot more interviews lined up, a lot more information to share. I can't wait to see you in the next one. Until then, take care.